everyone, welcome to um, another video. I'm uh, Steve Furness. Thank you for watching. If this is your first time watching, um, I do um, infrequent video posts, mostly just what I pick up um, from month to month as far as DVDs and Blu-rays go. I uh, do stick to the end for this one because I have a special pickup that I want to show you, something I picked up. Um, didn't really pick it up, but yeah. <laughs> it's uh, not a DVD or Blu-ray, but it's part of a, I wouldn't call it a collection video, but uh, or part of the collection video, rather. But it is something I purchased, and I'll show it off to you. Anyway, uh, this past month, July, was, of course, Criterion, 50% off at Barnes & Noble sale, and... Uh, I took advantage of that quite a bit. I'll show you that. But first, non-criterion non stuff. Uh, I just got this in the mail yesterday, and I'm already going to have to send it back because it's uh, damaged. The disc is damaged. But uh, before I send it back, I figure I'd show it to you. It is the Changeling. Sorry about the glare. The Changeling. Film I have not seen before, strangely enough, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. And it was for a good price on Amazon. So, again, sorry for the glare. You probably can't read that. But uh, we'll see how it is. A few Arrow pickups this month. I uh, bought this at FYE. It was, um, I believe, an FYE exclusive. I could be wrong. I thought that's what it said, though, on the cover. Um, normally 40 bucks, but it was uh, marked half off. So it is the uh, Steelbook edition of the Reanimator which is a film that I enjoy. Um, I have the old, was it Anchor Bay Blu-ray release of that? And I didn't think I would upgrade it, but this was too nice of a deal. Lots of great special features and a, I believe a new 4K transfer. So we'll see how this goes. i big fan of the movie. Another one, uh, this is a film that I own on VHS. I can finally throw up my VHS copy of this. Uh, it is The Addiction, Lily Taylor and uh, Christopher Walken. New Arrow release. I have not had a chance to watch it yet. Uh, last month was extremely busy. I have <laughs> Most nights I was out doing something or um, engaged in some kind of preoccupation. <laughs> uh, and this month is pretty much being the same thing. And uh, i got to move my son into... Uh, dorm room here in a few, um, about a week, week and a half. So, summer is busy in my house. This next one is another Arrow, and I can thank uh, Culture Dog, <laughs> Sam Hatch, for this one. I watched his review and couldn't help myself. And I don't, this is not a film that, uh, um, it's not a film that I'm proud to show, but at the same time, it's an important film, and I, I, I do like it, for whatever that means. It is the Arrow release of The Last House on the Left. It's a sort of a box release. There's the, the spine. Uh, it includes a, um, the Blu-ray. It includes um, a poster. And it includes a little book, booklet. It's a little bit more substantial than a booklet, but not a book by any means. Okay, that's a criterion. Uh, this is something I picked up at Walmart a few weeks ago. Nine bucks. It is the Charles Bronson Four movie collection, the Valachi Papers, the Stone Killer, Breakout, and Hard Times. I've seen two of the four. I've seen the Valachi Papers and Stone Killer. And they're pretty good. It is a... Uh, Mill Creek release, so it's a uh, image quality is actually pretty good uh, from what I've previewed. Oh boy, this uh, my friend uh, Gray nineteen fifty one Mike he just reviewed this I think on was it Letterbox I read your review and uh, you didn't like the movie and it's a shame because I really like this film. Uh, it's um, a film that um, I didn't see in the theater. I was a little bit young for that. Not too much, not by much, but just a slightly. Uh, it is uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula. And I, I, I do dig this movie. I think it's 
visually, I think it's it's a little over the top, but it, it seems to make sense within the story. Um, the actual novel, the Bram Stoker's novel, Dracula, um, is uh, it, it's it's a classic. It's a bit tedious, and I think he he distills down much of what was in the novel, um, re- remaining fairly true to Bram Stoker, but a little going a little above and beyond too. The uh, the love angle, the Dracula and love angle. Uh, was it in the book? If it was, it's been a couple years, a few years really, since I last read Dracula, but I don't remember it being that prominent. But anyway, it's a salutary effort. And no, it will never beat the Bela Lugosi version. But hey, what are you going to do? Okay, last non-Criterion-related uh, pickup, I think. Yes. Uh, and this was a blind buy. I'm a kind of a Batman fanatic. Um, and uh, this looks interesting. I am not necessarily an anime fan, but um, this was... Uh, it's either people love it or hate it online. And I thought, um, I'll take a chance on it, because I usually try to pick up most of the animated films as they come out. It is Batman Ninja, which almost sounds like a joke now that I say it. <laughs> but uh, the art looks quite amazing. There's the back of it. This is the Steelbook edition. And uh, I believe it was a Best Buy I saw this. So I'm, I'm pretty interested to, to watch this. Okay, here we go. Here's Criterion uh, for July 2018 from Barnes & Noble, 50% off. I hope that there will be... I hope that Barnes & Noble will still be around in November for the uh, 50% off sale. I hope. I'm really keeping my fingers crossed. I live in a rural area, so uh, Barnes & Nobles aren't, or really any large major emporium that would sell Criterion DVDs and Blu-rays. Uh, they're pretty far away from me, so if they take that away from me, oh, I'll be a sad, sad person. But, okay, first one, uh, this is a, a DVD. It's the only DVD I bought. And uh, this is a out-of-print OOP. And uh, Daisuke, you told me that this was out-of-print, and I, and I kind of called you, and I'm like, no, it's not out-of-print. I saw it in Barnes & Noble uh, DVD. But um, he is right. I did look it up. So I picked this up um, just to, like, it was $9. It was $9, Okay. Chasing Amy, uh, the Criterion. I do have this DVD, but um, it's kind of beat up, um, so it's it's kind of good that this that this was uh, available. I'm not a huge Kevin Smith fanatic. I don't. I think his work is. What has he done lately? Anyway, I'm not even sure, but uh, I do think this is a good film. Some people don't like it. Some people do. Um, I prefer it to Clerks. And I think it's uh, better written. Um, I think it's... Uh, I mean, Kevin Smith's direction, nobody's going to give him an award for that. But I think the performances are there, and I think that it's a, it's a well-written screenplay. And, um, you know, I think this is a very good version. It has a lot of great special features, a commentary, and uh, lots of deleted scenes and outtakes and things like that. So if you see this in your local Barnes & Noble, pick it up because it is OOP, as opposed to OPP. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is, uh, you might say this is the crown jewel of the, of the pickup. Uh, this is something that I wanted, and I got it <laughs> to its suite. It is the um, Dietrich and von Sternberg box set in Hollywood box set. Um, man, isn't that sexy? It's a Blu-ray box set. There's the spine. Very nice. There's the, uh, the features on that. And uh, here's all the films. I'll actually go through and uh, show you the, the individual releases. I think that warrants... Um, this is a set that I think is pretty... is worth um, sort of taking our time on for a second. Um, I've watched one of the films previous to buying it, um, The Scarlet Empress. That was a... Actually, this is a re-release of The Scarlet Empress on Blu-ray. I actually own that original DVD, but this will replace it nicely. Okay. 
Now, wasn't she beautiful? I believe some of these, and I could be wrong, but I believe some of these are available to stream on Filmstruck. Um, so if you're not really sure and you have Filmstruck, check that out. Okay. Here is Scarlet Empress. And finally, yeah, this is a pretty substantial set, and uh, I uh, I love it. This is something that I've been kind of hoping for for quite a while. The Criterion would release. It also comes with a fairly thick booklet. Wouldn't call it a book. More than a booklet, though. Um, you know, it has some uh, photos and. Uh, essays. I've kind of had a cursory look at this, but read really nothing more than a paragraph or two. I have to do a, like a like a you know a Dietrich von Sternberg marathon at some point. One thing I've noticed, and um, I really well, I really hadn't noticed it before, but then I was watching my friend Daisuke, his YouTube channel, and he was talking about um, uh, Criterion box sets that had. Um, spine numbers as opposed to ones that did not. And I didn't really know what he was talking about, but sure enough, uh, this has a spine number. It's spine number, get that, 30, not 930, right? Yep. But then the individual titles, is that showing up? I think so. Have spine numbers. What, what What's with that? I am not a spine number snob. As a matter of fact, I, um, most of my well, all of my criterions are interspersed with all of my other films, um, alphabetically. Um, because I don't think that I should um, sort of quarantine one movie because it's released by a certain company, but not another film because it was released by a studio. I don't know. Um, so I, I have all of my titles interspersed in alphabetical order. So... Um, I don't understand why this gets gets a spine number. It, it's sort of, in, and maybe my my logic is completely messed up here. But doesn't it seem to you like it's uh, sort of inflating the amount of titles that Criterion actually has? Maybe, possibly. I don't know. Let me know. Okay, here's a film that I purchased years ago on DVD, and I was very glad to see Criterion um, put out a, a very good Blu-ray version. It's a um, it's a great movie, great little movie, and I think one of the director's shortest films, but certainly worthy of watching. It's uh, Punch Drunk Love, Adam Sandler and uh, Emily uh, Watson. Couldn't remember her last name. Great little movie. Okay, um, <clears throat> here's one uh, that I uh, am upgrading from DVD. It is uh, David Cronenberg's Videodrome. Hmm. I like the spine there. It kind of looks like a a really thin VHS sort of spine. And actually, the, the actual case kind of has a, I guess, a Betamax look, doesn't it? Oh, lovely. Up next, this is a film that I, I don't own on any format. I've read the book. I've read um, all of his books. Um, all the writers in the in the sort of universe that this film uh, shares, uh, Jonathan Demme's film uh, *Silence of the Lambs*. We watched this uh, a couple weeks ago. Looks great. Looks amazing. Lots of uh, really great uh, special features in there too, including a commentary that I believe was recorded originally for the Laserdisc. So interesting. Another Cronenberg film. Um, I um, I've seen this before, but I don't own it, and it, uh, I'm kind of interested in seeing it now. Now now that I'm trying to watch more in the horror science fiction genre, I'm trying to kind of catch up on certain films that I've seen or haven't seen in a while, or films I've not seen. And this is a film I certainly haven't seen since I was in high school. 
scanners. This is the DVD only version. There was a, a version that was released a few years ago that was a dual format. This is the DVD version. Don't need anything else besides this. Okay, Daisuke, guess what? I, I think we talked about, it. was I going to get this? Was I not going to get this? Um, I asked him about um, this release in reference to another release that it appears in. And uh, I ended up going and buying it. It's a Twin Peaks Wire Walk With Me uh, Blu-ray. Uh, I do own the entire mystery, I think it's called, which has the first two seasons of uh, Twin Peaks and Fire Walk With Me, plus all of the, uh, the 90 minutes of the missing pieces, uh, deleted scenes. And I asked him what he thought about um, rebuying this, and he had said that his version in the Twin Peaks box set uh, was actually defective, so it made sense for him to buy this. Um, for me, not so much, because my copy did work. But um, I'm not trying to be Criterion complete, but I am trying to be David Lynch complete. So it kind of makes sense. There's the, the back there. There are a couple, a uh, few release uh, features on there that I think uh, are not in uh, the Twin Peaks box set, which is a great box set, by the way. And if you've not seen um, the, uh, the new Twin Peaks, what was it called, The Return? Check it out. Some amazing, amazing filmmaking there. I, you know, it's um. I didn't want it to end. I remember um, we got the Stars app and watched it on the Apple TV. Um, I, I just did not want it to end, and uh, I have since purchased the Blu-ray, and it's an amazing, amazing release. It it does come with this nice book, not a booklet, not really a book, and uh, I don't know why I'm opening this one. I haven't opened up the other ones, but here's the the, uh, the inside of it. Here's something else that uh, Daisuke had mentioned, and I, I I did not I've not seen this before. I don't I've never owned it, and I certainly um, there's no reason why I shouldn't have seen this before because I, I love the director. I love all of his work. I've seen I think everything that's been released of his aside from this anyway. Uh, it's a uh, Kagemusha from 1980. Criterion Blu-ray release. I wasn't sure if this or was it Ron that was uh, out of print. It is uh, Ron, and um, I recently watched that on Filmstruck, and I was blown away by how great it is. That uh, Akira Kurosawa, you know, he, his his career is marked by ma masterpiece after masterpiece. I, I don't recall any Kurosawa films that were mediocre. Certainly none that were bad. I enjoyed all of them. Um, certain ones of his are, I think, masterpieces. I think the, the Seven Samurai is certainly a masterpiece. Uh, Sanjiro, Yojimbo, um, for me, Akiru, Akiru—that's that's how it's pronounced, right? Um, that to me is just a heartbreaking, heartbreaking film. Ron, so many great movies, and I'm thinking this is going to be one of them. Well, how you like this? Another Cronenberg movie. Um, I used to have the old MGM DVD. I say I used to. I still do own the MGM DVD of this. Uh, it's time to upgrade. The Brood. Cronenberg. The Brood. One of my favorite actors. Uh, Oliver Reed. Great guy. Okay, uh, the next couple are... Um, kind of, kind of kicking myself for getting these because... It was um, announced after I purchased these two, uh, which I'm upgrading, by the way. Um, it was announced that a pretty substantial <clears throat> sort of quote-unquote box set is going to be released in November of this director's works. And um, a lot of unreleased films as well are to be included in this box set, and certainly these films. And if I'd known that, I probably wouldn't have bought these two. You know, these are... Or upgrades, Blu-ray upgrades. Well, anyway, what are you going to do? I'm still going to get it because I'm a huge fan of Igmar Bergman, The Virgin Spring. And uh, one of my absolute favorites of his, I love this movie. I have so many favorite of his, but I have so many favorites of his, rather. Uh, but um, this is just a, an amazing piece of piece of cinema. Cries and Whispers. 
which I thought the DVD version was pretty decent, but this is a, a nice upgrade. Okay, um, here's a film that I, I, I bought on DVD back in, was it 1999? No, it must have been 2000 or 2001 when it was first released. Probably 2000. And I, I've ha I still had that DVD, but this is a nice upgrade. Criterion finally put it out a couple years ago, being John Malkovich. Don't really care for the cover art on this one. I'm not going to lie. I, I get what they're doing, but I think someone, if someone who hasn't seen the film might be a little put off by it. But it's a, it's a great film. It's kind of darkly funny. Um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Winding down, I have seen this before. I'd, I've never owned it before, but um, it's a great film, and I don't know why I didn't buy it sooner. It's uh, Kwaidan. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Let me know if I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, Mizaki Kobayashi. It's a great film. Looking forward to revisiting this. Maybe I'll, I'll wait until October and watch it. Okay, last but not least... Okay, um, this I used to own the, the old MGM DVD of this. That's quite an old DVD. And uh, recently, Criterion re released this. I'm a big fan of Federico Fellini. It is Fellini's Roma on Blu-ray. Uh, the more Federico Fellini we have, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Um, there's still some films of his that are missing. There are films of his that have been out of, or have gone out of print from Criterion. So um, I would hope that maybe Criterion would, in the next few years, put together a maybe a limited edition box set of his of his work. I think his hundredth is coming up um, in the next few years. So if if, if Criterion would do that, I would. <laughs> I'd be happy, because I'm a big Fellini guy. Anyway, those are my um, movie DVD Blu-ray pickups for the month of July. Obviously, it's a... It's, well, I mean, it's uh, even without the Criterions, I think I bought a lot. But um, there's one more thing I, I, I purchased this summer that uh, this past July, actually, I picked it up in uh, July 21st. It is a um, something that I needed, something that I'll use every day. Um, it's very expensive, well, anything, if anyone buys one of these, then they're very expensive, obviously, but, uh, necessary in order to live day to day. Let's go find out what that is. Okay, so we're gonna head through the house. I want to, uh, walk through the house. Okay, watch out for my cat. There he goes. I've got cats everywhere that want to go out. Go on. It is hot today. It is, uh... It's, uh... Heat index over 100. It's pretty hot. Okay. Here we go. Is it exciting? Maybe? All right. Let me, uh... Okay. So, this is what I purchased in the month of July. Oh! is uh, my new car. It is a 2018 Toyota Camry SE. It's not the baseline, it's not the top of the line, just the middle, middle of the road. I've never owned a Camry before. Uh, yes, I know I've got to wash it. <laughs> it's been a few weeks since I've had it. So, there you go. Not to be braggadocious. Is that a word? I wouldn't be like Ann B in the Andy Griffith show and brag about everything. But, 
it's a pretty significant purchase for me. I've never really, I had one new vehicle, I had a new Jeep well over 20 years ago. I'm used to driving either trucks or SUVs. So that is uh, kind of a big deal for me. It's got a hell of a lot of leg room because I am tall. And it's comfortable as hell. And I'm not having to pay $50 twice a week at the pump, which is, um, which is amazing. So, yeah, I don't want to be braggadocious, but that's, that's what I bought. Okay, well, uh, that is, that, that's it, folks. Thank you for watching. I, I appreciate anyone who takes their time out to check these out. I, I know that I'm, uh, one of many, many, many YouTubers who show off their, um, movie pickups. I guess you can't call it a haul anymore. I don't know why, though. I, I never really got that. Uh, Daisuke was the one that said that you shouldn't call it a haul. I don't know why. I, I don't really care. But, uh, uh, my collection, how about that? So if you have any questions about any of these, uh, I'd be happy to answer them, talk to you about them. And I guess that'll be it. I'm rambling at this point. So, um, until next time, I hope you have a great, uh, afternoon or day or night. And, uh, we'll see ya real soon.